So I want to walk you through how we plan a makoplasty case, and this is the makoplasty workstation. Uh, this is where I do the surgical plan before surgery. This device here is the makoplasty robotic arm, and this is what we use to sculpt the bone during the surgery. This robotic arm has uh, different end effectors here for partial knee replacement. It's a six millimeter ball burr, and for total hip replacement, it's a standard appearing reamer. Uh, soon to come, we're gonna have total knee replacement capabilities with this, uh, probably within the next six months to nine months or so. Before the case, we come to the workstation, and, and before surgery, patients go to get a CT scan. That CT scan is then segmented into a three-dimensional bone model that allows us to do the preoperative planning very accurately. You can see here, this model actually is a model of this particular patient's knee, and this is the tibia or the shin bone. I can see both components if I want to see both components, and I'm going to show you how we work independently on all the components involved to get the right sizes and get the right component orientation. We plan all this before the surgery so we can optimize the location of the patient's implants and thereby get a better uh, functional result. So when I start my planning, I start with the simplest bone to plan, which is the tibia. I say it's the simplest because it's, it's a platform, essentially. There's not much curvature to it, as opposed to the thigh bone, where the end of the femur is quite curved. The CT scan here has multiple views. This is a side view in this lower right-hand panel. This is a frontal view in the lower left-hand panel. This is what's called an axial view, kind of like slicing a loaf of bread, um, which shows us the, the size of the implant and how it mates up to the top of the tibial surface. And then finally, I'll come to the, the bone model here to look how my planning and all these separate windows has come together. So typically what I'll do in this lower right-hand pane is I'll look at the tibial slope, which is the angle by which the top of the shin bone goes from front to back. And I try to mimic that slope, um, mainly paralleling the back half to two-thirds of the tibia, which is the tibial platform. Once I'm happy with this part of the planning, I'll move on to the, what's called the coronal or the frontal images. And I want to make sure that this implant fits well medial-lateral without undermining this spine right here, which is where the ACL partially attaches. So this plan, I'm going to just move this, and I have the capacity to move these implants however I, I, I choose to try and get it to be an optimal fit for this particular patient. So right now I'm actually moving this component medial because I want this tibial component to rest squarely on the cortical surface so it has good bony support. I also didn't like the fact that it was undermining the tibial eminence a little bit, again, where that ACL attaches. So I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, well, this, I have it set up for a size three and I'm gonna look to see what a size two looks like because it's a little close to the center of the knee. And so a size two makes me a little bit happier not undermining that tibial eminence. I'm going to see how that affects the sizing and the rest of the plane. So I'm going to go up to this axial view, which is really kind of the best view for looking at the overall size. And I can see that that size actually fits well within the plateau. I've got good cortical rim support. Uh, that looks like the size that I'm going to select. The last thing I do on the tibial piece is I, I come and I look at the three-dimensional bone model, and I can spin this around the X, Y, and Z axes any way I want to look. And, and typically I look at it from above, this is just like looking straight down on the shin bone. And I can see that that component is well supported all the way around. I'm going to spin it up from the front and then look at it from the bottom. And I can see the keel and the two post holes. And they're really kind of engaging a good cancellous bone in the middle of the medial side of the tibial plateau. Once more, just to check, because my, my makoplasty reps are so good at planning these things, I'm going to go back and look at a three again and make sure that I'm not undersizing it just convince myself that, that I'm making the right decision. So I put that three back on, and you can see now it's a bigger looking component. It still fits, but to my eye on this lower uh, left-hand frontal view, it's a little bit too close to the tibial eminence for me. So I think I'm going to go with the two. And bear in mind, this is all preoperative planning. We have not touched the patient yet. We can modify this intraoperatively if we see something that we don't like. So at this stage of the game, we're going to go to this drop-down box. I just had medial tibia. I'm now going to go to the medial femur. And the first thing I do in this lower right-hand panel, which is the side view, is pick a radius of curvature of the implant, which I think fits the patient's native radius of curvature on the end of their thigh bone. And this, you can see, this, this purplish line really intersects that implant well. 
So I think that the size 3 on the femur is the right size. I can always check that and, and say, okay, well, I put a 2 on the tibia. Maybe I should put a 2 on the femur. And when I do that, it just looks too small. You can see the radius of curvature is much smaller than the native radius of curvature, and you can see that in that overlap right there. So I'm going to switch it back to a 3 because, in, in my mind, clearly the 3 is the right size on the femur. So that's been oriented in, in a nice way on the sagittal plane. I'm going to look at the coronal plane here, and that really looks like it's fitting well on the bone. I then go to the axial ver uh, view, and I want to see that this is really sitting flush in the middle of the condyle, and it really is. And you can see some of the changes of arthritis here on this, on this CT scan. This is a bone spur right there, and there's a bone spur right there. You can see that in this uh, coronal view as well. Um, so the, the three-dimensional CT gives us a tremendous amount of information for surgical planning for patients. Once I get through those three panels, I then look at the three-dimensional bone model again, and that kind of incorporates all the information from the individual panes, and I'm able to really see the global picture as to what we're going to get. And I really like the way that femur is sitting on that medial femoral condyle. I then have the capacity to go on if we're going to do a bicompartmental replacement. So what I just showed you was a unicompartmental replacement. If I'm going to do a bicompartmental replacement, we have to work on the patellofemoral joint. So I'll select patellofemoral primary. And this is really the hardest component to uh, plan because, as you can imagine, um, the tibia is relatively flat. There's one kind of concavity or convexity on the femoral side, but there's intersecting concavities and, and, and uh, convexities on the patellofemoral joint. The trochlea of the femur is kind of shaped like a saddle. And that saddle shape makes the patellofemoral joint the most difficult one to plan. In this scenario, one of the things that I do first is I, rather than start at the lower right, I very often will go to the, the three-dimensional bone model right off the bat because it gives us a lot of information. And I just want to see how that patellofemoral joint is sitting on the bone. And I can see uh, that, that my macroplasty rep has done a great job, actually, in, in orienting this on the anterior aspect of the femur. So I'm looking at that three-dimensional bone model, and it looks really good. I'm then going to go back through the different sequences. This is the side cut, the frontal cut, and the axial cut, just to make sure that my three-dimensional assessment is good. So I can scroll using the scroll bar on the side through the entirety of the cuts, and it shows me the relationship of the implants. It shows me the relationship of the tip of the femoral component to the tip of the patellofemoral component. And the important part of that is that this visual axis line, this pink line, shows me that those joint surfaces are congruent. So you don't want any speed bumps or step offs. And this surgical planning tool allows us to do that. I then go on the coronal view. And again, you can see the visual axes here. And you can see that there is no step off between the tongue or the front of that patellofemoral component and the runner of the, of the femoral component. So those things are lining up completely flush. I then am able to look at the medial lateral coverage on the axial cut here in the upper left-hand pane. And I want to get really maximal coverage from, from medial to lateral uh, to make sure that there's no uncovered bone or cartilage that might get rubbed on by a component. And this fit from medial to lateral looks really good. I then go back and look at the trochlear component on the three-dimensional bone model. Looks perfect. I then have the ability to look at all the components together. So I've I've, I've looked at the tibia isolated, I've looked at the femur isolated, now I put them all together and look at them together. And so I'm able to see, for example, by spinning this three-dimensional bone model along, that the components are oriented properly to one another. We want to make sure that they're flush, we want to make sure that there isn't any significant crisscross, we want to make sure that the bearing surfaces are going to be aligned, and we can really see that. And I can see that a little bit better if I take off the patellofemoral component, because it changes the color of the implants and really allows me to show you how that femoral component is running directly over the tibial component. Now, it's a little bit medial, so I can adjust that. I mean, I can look at this three-dimensional model from above and I can work in another pane and make some adjustments to the implants and you can see the result there. So I'm gonna just squeeze this, uh, excuse me, this femoral component into the notch a little bit and you can see here that I'm moving it a little closer over the, over the tibial tray, and I like that. When I finish doing that, I'm going to deselect the tibia, and then I'm just going to look at the femur to make sure that I didn't put it in a place that I didn't want, and it's still flush with the condyle, and it's still 
um, is exactly how I want it to be. So I now have my preoperative plan done. We haven't touched the patient yet. This is all the information that we've gleaned from CT scans and creation of a three-dimensional model. Intraoperatively, which is something that you'll see in a, in a short time, we have the ability to modify this and change any of these pieces to uh, achieve uh, uh, optimal ligament balance. Thanks. That's it.